Welcome to another short video from United Silicon Carbide is now Corvo. Today we'll have a brief presentation entitled Short Circuit Performance of Industry's Lowest RDS on Silicon Carbide FETs. Recently, United Silicon Carbide has released its latest generation silicon carbide cascode FETs, including the new lowest on resistance 750 volt FET in a standard discrete package. The new 6 milliohm silicon carbide FET is offered in a standard 4 lead TO247 through hole package. The remarkably low on resistance is made possible by the ultra low specific on resistance of the silicon carbide JFET based stack cascode technology. In the figure on the right, you can see the specific on resistance of the new 750 volt technology compared to the best in class silicon carbide MOSFETs rated at 650 volts. At 25C, the new Gen 4 FETs offer about one-third the on resistance for a given die area, maintaining almost two times advantage up to 150 degrees C. While offering the lowest conduction losses paramount to most applications, many also require some level of short circuit ruggedness. Specifically, motor drive inverters should have some method to prevent catastrophic failure upon short circuit faults. A short circuit can occur in a typical motor drive system in a few different ways. A shoot through of the DC bus can occur if one of the phase like switches fails, or if an error in the gate driver timing occurs such that both switches are erroneously turned on at the same time. A phase to phase or phase to ground short can occur, occur if there's an insulation failure within the motor windings, or the winding uh, to casing insulation failure occurs. One thing to know is that when these faults occur, the power semiconductor is typically the first component to catastrophically fail. This happens in about a few microseconds. Therefore, to prevent a catastrophic system failure, detection and shutdown of the phase-like switches must be performed. This is typically done as shown in the figure below with a DSAT voltage detection, or in other schemes it can be done by current sensing. The response time to these faults is constrained by the required blanking time and filtering of that DSAT signal uh, to prevent false trips, and this is followed by a control loop delay time. As you can see, the trade-off between false trip rate and short circuit ride-through requirements of the power switch exists. Designers require this time to be sufficient in order to avoid this trade-off. Okay. Let's discuss a little bit about what determines the short circuit withstand time in a power FET. In the top left figure, we're shown a typical current and voltage waveforms exhibited by a FET in a type one short circuit. The blue curve depicts the drain source voltage with fluctuations associated with the voltage drop across the parasitic loop inductance during the high DIDT periods. The black curve shows a typical current waveform when in short circuit. The drain current increases to a peak value determined by the saturation current of the FET. After some time, the device's junction temperature rises and this satur saturation current decreases. The temperature rise is illustrated in the figure below. Here we've drawn a few likely outcomes identified by the blue numbered callouts. In the first case, the device reaches its critical temperature before the switch is turned off. This can be due to thermal runaway, parasitic transistor latch up, or in the case of MOSFETs, even by gate rupture. In the second case, the device is turned off before runaway. However, now that the junction temperature is much higher than normal operation, the device is now in its blocking state, and thermal runaway can still occur after the majority of fault current is extinguished. Finally, in case three, we show a safe short circuit event where the junction temperature remains well below its critical value during and after the fault is extinguished. The temperature cools as the device returns to its blocking state with low leakage. It follows from this discussion that some factors resulting in case one, two, or three are the peak short circuit current, the bus voltage, and the die size. The peak short circuit current is something we want to keep this value uh, as low as we can to maintain low energy dissipation during the short circuit. I must point out though, however, that this value cannot be too low since the switch should still be able to handle its surge currents uh, associated with the motor drive's mission profile. The bus voltage always also impacts the withstand time. While the FET itself may saturate to a comparable current at different bus voltages, 
The higher the bus voltage, the higher the energy in short circuit, and require, resultingly, the higher the temperature rise. Also, recall from failure mode two, the device must be able to block this bus voltage after the temperature rise with sufficiently low leakage to prevent thermal runaway. So in this way, the bus voltage has a compounding effect on withstand time. Finally, it can be stated for a given energy dumped into uh, the die under short circuit, a smaller die will have reduced thermal capacity or a higher thermal impedance and will result in a larger temperature rise. So when it comes to sodium carbide, the low conduction and switching losses that afford smaller die size actually come at the expense of short circuit ruggedness. The silicon IGBT die sizes that silicon carbide FETs are replacing are typical three to, typically three to six times larger. Therefore, silicon carbide FETs are unlikely to offer the conventional 10 microsecond short circuit ratings without large compromises in cost or efficiency. Let's look specifically at silicon carbide MOSFETs. We know that their inversion mobility is relatively poor and their channel resistances is higher than that of silicon. The consequence of this is that in order to reduce on resistance, MOSFETs require shrinking cell pitch using shorter channels and increasing the gate oxide field. These factors tend to increase peak short circuit current and increase the rate, uh, risk of gate oxide rupture during the fall. So reducing the RDS on per unit area for further die shrink, better efficiency and lower cost comes at the expense of short circuit ruggedness. From the previous chart, it was clear that what we really want is a switch with low specific on resistance, good current saturation or current limiting uh, performance that decreases with temperature and has no gate oxide and a low threshold voltage dependence with temperature. All of these characteristics are actually found in silicon carbide JFETs. And indeed, it's the silicon carbide JFET that fully determines the short circuit performance of a stack cascode FET. In this slide, we're shown the TCAD simulated short circuit event of a stack cascode FET. In this case, the silicon MOSFET is die stacked atop of a silicon carbide JFET, as is done in our UJ4SC series products. Under short circuit, the silicon MOSFET remains in its RDS on mode of operation, while the silicon carbide JFET enters its current saturation and it supports virtually the entire bus voltage. Therefore, the short circuit energy is dissipated in the bulk of the silicon carbide. Furthermore, in the short time period of 10 microseconds or less, you can see that the process is essentially adiabatic and the temperature rise is contained to the JFET and topside metallization. The silicon MOSFET safely remains well below its maximum temperature throughout the process, while the junction temperature in the bulk of the silicon carbide JFET can reach uh, in excess of 600 degrees C. Leveraging these advantages, United Silicon Carbide is able to offer the lowest on resistance 6 milliohm FETs with a usable industry best short circuit time of 5 microseconds. In this slide, we're able to show our UJ4SC 075006K4S device safely turning off a 400 volt bus type 1 short circuit. It safely withstands 10 microseconds when starting from room temperature and 8 microseconds after the same fault starting from an initial junction temperature of 175 degrees C. Thanks for your time, and please visit unitedsic.com for more information about our new silicon carbide FETs.